Peter Cameron, and I'm executive director and founder of Vietnam Veterans California, or the Veterans Resource Centers of America. We are an organization that's over 42 years old. I've been serving veterans for that long and serving them quite well. We've I'm Larry Newsom. I'm the regional director of VRC. Um, we have over 13 sites. It's uh, Veterans Resource of America. We've been around for 42 years. And what makes us so special is that our main goal, our main purpose, is to help the veteran population. We help veterans from World War II, I mean, from Vietnam era, all the way up to the latest combat. What we do, we try to be a bridge for them coming back so they can find their way and find their place in mainstream society. The veteran culture is never to admit that they're broke. They never reach out for a helping hand or to get any assistance. So a lot of this is trying to get veterans to understand that there is help. They're not losing any pride by coming to get the help. And it's in their benefit to come see what they have coming from for even one day of serving their country. And we really feel, frankly, it's the whole community's responsibility uh, to uh, welcome back these new veterans and try and, as much as possible, give them the resources they need to become self-sufficient and get on with their lives. So welcome. Thank you for coming out. This is a, a really delightful opportunity to have you all here, and uh, what a terrific project we're going to talk about today. Um, this is a, a long-standing Nonprofit in the state of California and the, in the United States. It's expanded into a circle of collaborators as well. Dedicated to taking care of, supporting, uh, being sure that services are provided to veterans. Uh, we always talk about veteran services as a duty, and I think there's no question that that's true. And we talk about it in in community as being compassionate and and decent and civil, and I think that's true. It, it also makes me think of some of the civil rights era conversations that I had that really moved me, and one of the things that people said was, nobody in the room, nobody in the town, nobody in the country has dignity until everybody has dignity. And it's something that we really aspire to, and it's something that organization really is dedicated to it. As a chamber, let me say that we're very, we're very committed to this. Uh, let me also say that personally, I have a new commitment. We just shipped off uh, our oldest grandson to Okinawa, his first tour overseas as a Marine. Ooh! Super fun! Oh, right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, we we uh, wish for the best for him and trust that we're delivering the best for the people we've been. Um, there's several people that are going to speak. Let me first introduce uh, Peter Cameron, who's the CEO of the Vet Resources Center. Uh, thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Peter Cameron. Once again, I served in the uh, Army. Vietnam, hey. 66, 67. Uh, let me say that again. Army. Army! Yeah. 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 You guys are asleep. Come on. Sleep oh. Sleep. Oh, no. Well, in, when I got back uh, from Vietnam in 67, it was a different world. Uh, went to college in the 70s, early 70s, started working with v returning Vietnam veterans. And we came together as a, as a group. And because of that, we didn't have a lot of uh, uh, good reception to this, as many as you know, it was at different times. So we got together with our friends, families, girlfriends, wives, and formed our own community support community. And it became known as, uh, and don't laugh, the Flower of the Dragon, it was called. Uh, and we had our own name and our own identity. It was a safe and secure place. It became recognized as a national model for community services to veterans. Uh, and we soon found ourselves at, at this time under the Carter administration working with the White House to establish others. And we're still doing it today. Uh, 
the model that worked then is still working to help veterans. And the reason for that, two main reasons for that, because we found people that are compassionate, understanding, and very skilled. Not just veterans, but non-veterans as well. And the other reason is because we proved ourselves in the 70s to the rest of the community and they came to support us. Uh, far different today when I've never seen such a, a great uh, community support uh, that we have today to do our job. We serve agency-wide over 10,000 veterans in California and three states. All of those veterans are either disabled or homeless or low income. They all need services. We can't, that is to say our staff here, can't do our jobs alone. So it's so critical that the community comes out. One other thing that we're focusing on as an agency, if I can throw this out, is as we all know, veterans need understanding, they need professional services, they need help, employment, training, counseling, etc. They also need housing, to state the obvious. I've been very much involved recently working with the Speaker's Office here in California on uh, AB 639, which is now Prop 41, which has created $600 million in bonding authority for to develop affordable housing for veterans. We are currently pursuing the strategy to identify needs in each of these communities and also opportunities to build housing. So it's, it's the future here. We're going to be here for many years to come. We're going to be creating housing. We're going to be creating and enhancing local communities to give every veteran who's currently homeless, low income, a safe, secure place to live. And we will continue to need your support. And I might mention, uh, Congressman, as you already know, we need those hud vouchers. Hey! They're, they're critical. To, and that's up to Congress. And I want to say one thing. It, 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 everything we do is a result of public policy, frankly, whether that's at a city level, a county level, a state level, or in Congress. That's where these programs are created, and it's your job to continue to articulate the needs in your community so they can take that back to Washington or Sacramento and create these and continue to support these programs. Uh, one other thing I want to, our staff is here. Raise your hands, please. They are the reason I serve. And uh, they are the reason I go home at night and have a good night's sleep, because I know they're doing a good, great job out here. So uh, please give them your respect as I do. And thank you. So I'll shut up. Thank you. And let me introduce uh, now our congressman, Sam Farr, one of the, one of the good guys in D.C. <laughs> Uh, DC as well, besides just guys. But uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for being veterans. I'm the uh, congressman from Monterey, Santa Cruz, and San Benito counties, and a little bit of uh, Santa Clara County, Gilroy. I've been in Congress 20 years. I'm on the Appropriations Committee, and I'm the senior, longest serving member on the Veterans Appropriations Committee. We're the committee that appropriates the money, allows it to be spent by the Department of Veterans Affairs. And what I've been doing is trying to make sure that all politics is local and that the fact that we put about $11 billion into the state of California from the Department of Veterans Affairs for our VA hospitals and our VA, but mostly for veterans' benefits. And that as sort of one-tenth of the entire budget of California, that the state of California has got to own up to its responsibilities for veterans as well as the federal government and local governments. We are, our pledge, my pledge when I got on that committee is to leave no veteran behind. And uh, I try to uh, put money where the, my mouth is and get it implemented. And I've been very lucky that with the support of the communities, we've been able to break a few uh, rice bowls. We've now uh, 
for the first time really got in the Department of Defense. I remind the Department of Defense that you can't be a veteran unless you've gone through the Department of Defense first. And therefore, the Department of Defense has a lot more responsibility for what's happening with our veteran community. And, it, it, you know, at least they can get the files in order and get them electronically recorded. And when the veteran leaves, that ought to be uh, transferred automatically without even asking uh, to the Department of Veterans Affairs. And then the Department of Veterans Affairs has got to be more responsible on the ground. And what we find is the community, and we've got our elected officials here uh, from the city council, realize that um, Washington can't do all the work. We can't make sure that every veteran is not left behind. We need local support. We have a county veterans uh, officer that the county hires and pays for. We, I've been able to get a uh, veterans clinic here in Capitola. Uh, and keep it open, expand it, and more importantly, we're now building, and I was there yesterday, in Marina, uh, for the first time anywhere in the United States, where the Department of Defense sat down with the Department of Veterans Affairs and said, let's build a clinic that both the active duty families, because if you're in uniform, you can go to the clinic of the Presidio Monterey, but if you're a spouse or a child of that soldier, uh, airman or marine, you're you're, you have to go to the civilian doctors. And the civilian doctors in lots of these areas are not taking TRICARE, the insurance that pays for them. So the military was underserving the active duty folks by not providing adequate care for their families. And they agreed to that after we did a study. Department of Veterans Affairs, same thing. You're not really serving the veterans. And we have a clinic that we were able to establish after closure of Fort Road. So for the first time, we've designed a clinic where both departments are involved in the design of it, where you walk through that door, it doesn't matter whether you're in uniform or civilian, you're going to get the best care of any caregiving institution anywhere in California. This is going to be state of the art. When I was there yesterday, the steel went up to $100 million building, and it's going to be for all the veterans and active duty uh, families of, of, of the Bay Area. And secondly, we've been able to finally get the state of California to recognize that uh, if the federal government won't build a cemetery because they have space available over in Santa Anella, uh, and they have Plan B under federal law that you can open a cemetery, uh, the state can open a cemetery, the feds will pay for it, but the state's got to maintain it. California's had the attitude, we're never going to open a cemetery. We're not in the cemetery business. Well, it took uh, assembly member Bruce McPherson, assembly member, Fred Keeley, assembly member, John Laird, and the assembly member, <laughs> the list went on, and all the respective senators, and we finally uh, got in the state to, uh, to do their, we raised the money locally and got the state to put in the application, and uh, we've gotten the first check delivered, and hopefully we'll do groundbreaking in January of this next year to open a veteran's cemetery at Fort Ord. And uh, so this region, And we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that no veteran, no family of a veteran, uh, and certainly the families of active duty, that the whole gamut, uh, from essentially cradle, because you could be born in the military and probably die as a veteran, but from cradle to grave, we're going to have all those services for the entire spectrum of military and veterans affairs. And I want to just applaud the city of Santa Cruz because they reached out with a nonprofit to set up this center to uh, provide all kinds of services, homeless prevention, employment training, transitional housing and permanent supportive housing, behavioral health treatment, nutrition services, case management. And uh, we're going to make sure that all the gaps are filled so indeed, at the end of the day, we can proudly say in our region, no veteran is left behind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. By the way, I'm Oh, you better do that. <laughs> Peter, uh, I just let the people know that when the veterans cut ribbons, they cut red tape. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Yeah, I'm really cool. proud. Cool. I'm proud to uh, give this to to uh, the Veterans Resource Center here in Santa Cruz. It's a certificate of special congressional recognition presented to the Veterans Resource Center of Santa Cruz in recognition of outstanding and valuable service to our community. And I might add to that to our nation. So I hope you can hang this proudly on your wall. To close this, uh, first let me introduce Mayor-elect Don Lane, who isn't going to speak, he says. <laughs> and Mayor, until December something, yeah. Lynn Robinson from the City of Santa Cruz. Thank you, Bill. Um, boy, what an honor for me to be able to speak after our esteemed Congressman, who has done so much. I think about all that he's done. He walks the walk and talks the talk about providing services and doing what he can in so many levels. And we could spend the next hour or two talking about his accomplishments, especially what he does for the veteran community. And I am here just with my gratitude. It is my deepest honor to be here because the work that you're doing here at the Veterans Service Center is so critically important. And I hope a lot of people were able to read the article that was in the paper today, because it just reminds you how each and every success is so real and transforms a life, just person by person by person. People that don't know their lives can be transformed, that just had no more hope or didn't know where to turn. And that's exactly what you are now providing. And I know that there's another move down the road, but here we are, Abel, to shine an incredible light right now while you're here on Soap Hill Drive, knowing eventually you'll be down on Water Street in the near future. And uh, on behalf of the city of Santa Cruz, I want to say also with the vice mayor, who is another person that does so much to look at how we do things to help end homelessness and in our community with the veterans, we have an item coming up at our next meeting this coming Tuesday, and I want to thank Vice Mayor Don Lane to make that happen as well. It's the Mayor's Challenge that's happening nationwide to end veteran homelessness, and so we're picking up our end in the city of Santa Cruz on Tuesday, and I, we're excited about that. So I just want to say on behalf of all the citizens of the city of Santa Cruz, please hear our gratitude for the work that you're doing and the lives that you're transforming and I have already had the pleasure of meeting so many people, but I have to say, meeting Lupe Olvera, who's now back sitting down, I think we tired him out, he's ready for the food, at the young age of 95, I believe is our possibly oldest vet in the county of Santa Cruz from World War II. He is just such a delight. I hope a lot of people have time to meet him. And with that, I just want to offer you congratulations. Congratulations. on three, so Peter and everyone else on three is hot. Okay, we ready? One, two, three. Yeah.